Hi, I'm Misha and I'm Reej and this is a tale. I'm a star party. Sorry. Kathiya bolna mushkil hai. Jab se and this is a tale of a hidden emperor. Acha. To figure out who the hidden emperor of the Mughal Empire was, we need to know thoda bahut about the Mughal Empire itself. So, the Mughal Empire was founded in 1526 by Zuhiruddin Muhammad Babur and it is what we now know as the land that is Southeast Asia. including countries like Pakistan, Bangladesh, India and more. And the empire lasted for about 200 years expanding from Kabul all the way down its south towards Deccan. It was a very rich empire and it had a lot of prominent rulers in Southeast Asia. One such was Emperor Jahangir, who was often overshadowed by his father Akbar, who aggressively expanded the empire. but nonetheless emperor jahangir was an adept ruler who was quite famous for a peaceful reign and during his time the arts flourished the empire did expand and there was overall quite a sense of contentment in the empire but there is evidence that suggests that there may have been someone else who was accountable for this success someone that the old historians rarely talk about and someone who recent historians believe played a vital role and who could be said who could be the hidden emperor it was no other than empress nur jahan so before nur jahan actually became empress she was born as mehronisa jo ke mirza gayas beg ki beti thi akbar ke daur ka ek bahut famous courtier now she was actually even married before um shah jahan to sher afghan khan at the age of 17 from that marriage she also had a daughter but later after her husband's death she remarried um and became empress nur jahan acha to agar wo hidden empress thi but kaise aur wo kya wajah thi ki nur jahan hidden empress ho sakti hai there were three things that made an islamic ruler and that was first having the sermon recited in your name the friday khutbah and this was quite a common tactic because mosques were placed throughout the empire and this was kind of a way of saying you know ki main emperor hu mere naam mein khutba padha ja raha hai that's it and the second really vital thing was having coins minted in your name and lastly and quite important was this step ke aap apne naam ke andar fatwe jari karte ho fatwe being um orders any orders that have the highest authority in the empire could be considered a fatwa and a fatwa only came from an emperor so let's talk about the minting of coins in 1617 coins came out jo ke puri empire mein circulate hue which were printed in the name of nur jahan and jahangir so kind of solidifying the fact that both of them have a good amount of authority now the minting of coins is very important for three reasons it does three very important things number 1 So there is a group of people around Nur Jahan who already knows that she's influential. Now these include the nobles, the elites, basically जो आपके दरबार में सारे लोग हैं जिनको geographically access है Nur Jahan का. They also now know that she has power almost equal to the emperor. Number two, there are a million subjects in the empire जिनके हाथों से अभी सिक्के गुजरेंगे. and normal traders salt traders cumin traders they now know okay that you no know, wo bhi dekh rahe hain sikke ke upar naam hai emperor ka bhi and empress ka bhi and this was the first time that this is, this had happened in the mughal empire so this was something new to them and this really signified her power now the third and most important thing was that this also showcased her power to an international audience because jo side trade routes thi they went through a lot of countries and a lot of traders would go through this subcontinental area right acha coin minting ke sath sath the major factor that we say like you know jahan was the hidden emperor is because she made fatwas in her name so in december 1617 while the rest of the imperial entourage went towards the capital nay nee, went towards agra my bad nur jahan broke away from the group and went to toda one of her ajmer states aur udhar ja ke she issued the first of many imperial edicts in her name historically in the court mughal women only issued hukums or nishans but what nur jahan does is she issues a firman and the interesting thing was how she signed that firman 
बिकॉज नूरजहाँ वॉज वेल अवेयर ऑफ द पावर शी हैड कॉइन्स के साथ साथ शी न्यू के फतवे वर द बिगेस्ट थिंग एंड दिस इज काइंड शोन इन द वे शी साइंड ऑफ दीज इशूज शी डिड इन राइट द वाइफ ऑफ एम्प्रेस सॉरी द वाइफ ऑफ एम्प्रेयर जहांगीर लेकिन बट खैर शी साइंड इट एज एम्प्रेस नूरजहाँ बादशाह बेगम नाउ बादशाह और बादशाह हाउ एवर यू वॉन्ट टू कॉल इट रिफर्स टू द एम्प्रेयर इन हिंदी एंड उर्दू एंड वेरियस सब कॉन्टेंट लैंग्वेजेस बट वट इट डिड वॉज दैट शी डिट रियली मैंशन वाइफ ऑफ शी अटैच दैट साइन ऑफ लिनियज टू हर नेम तो इस तरीके से लगता था अच्छा बादशाह का नाम नूरजहाँ के नाम के साथ आ रहा है then it means ko uske paas badshah jitni hi power so one of the major arguments against nurjahan being an emperor is the fact ke kabhi uske naam mein khutba jari nahi hua aaj tak to what this does is ke yes it does stop nurjahan from claiming the title of an emperor however it doesn't really stop her from gaining the power of an emperor and this is something that we can also see in how she interacts with important people around her and how they interact with her Now we'll start off with the emperor for um with the emperor. So Jahangir apni to uske Jahangir mein mentions bar bar ke he actually takes into account Nur Jahan ke um Nur Jahan ke recommendations and what she thinks when he's about to increase the rank of important noblemen and elite. So this is something that shows how influential she was even the emperor wanted her advice, right? And he regularly sought her counsel. and other than the emperor we can see that the future king prince khuram who later becomes known as shah jahan also knew the importance of having nur jahan on his side so not only did prince khuram call her walida khud which means my own mother jabki obviously she was not his own mother she was his step mother but he wanted to give her that respect because he needed her and one when prince khuram actually wins a battle against malik ambar in 1617 kuch land ke liye they had a battle um he actually throws a feast endorsing nur jahan because he knows ke he's only able to win this battle because nur jahan is on his side and usne uske khilaf sari saazishein and whatever traps baki courtiers ya jiska bhai prince khusro set kar sakta tha us nur jahan ne unko disable kiya right so he is well aware of that so he not only endorses her but he also gives her three times more gifts than he gives to any other elder woman over there including his own actual mother so this kind of shows the influence and power that she has and so one more very important bit here is that shah jahan and nur jahan were not on very very good terms prince khuram knew that until he succeeds he has to make sure that he has a good relationship with her even though even though he doesn't like the amount of power that she has and he wasn't the only one who kind of feared all the power that nurja had jo courtiers the wo kya sochte the empress nurja ke bare mein so we have a few things from these people and you can see this from a one prominent courtier who was quite discontent with the empress his name was mahabat khan and he says was there any king so subject to the will of his wife ना इससे पता लगता है कि उसको थोड़ी बहुत ही इनमिटी थी टूवर्ड्स कितनी इम्पोर्टेंस नूर जहाँ को मिलती थी देर आर लॉट ऑफ फॉरन डिग्नेटरीज हु ऑल्सो काइंड ऑफ रिपीट दिस सेंटिमेंट इन विच द काइंड ऑफ थिंक के ओ द एम्पर इज बींग कंट्रोल्ड बाय अ वुमेन इन देयर काइंड ऑफ थाट एंड वी सी दिस इन वन सच पर्सन कॉल थॉमस रो एन इंग्लिश मैन हु वॉज वेरी अपसेट बाय द फैक्ट दैट नूर जहाँ कैप्ट हिज सील ओवर नाइट and did not grant him you know the permission to see the emperor and he was very like he was sulking about it and then he goes on to say in and these are his exact words that the rest of this motion is inward among women of which sort though he keep a thousand yet one governs him and winds him up at her pleasure now by using words such as wind and her pleasure Thomas is kind of you know pissy about everything and he kind of wants to show Ketcha you know she's kind of dictating the emperor but in reality only this in reality this only shows that Nur Jahan had a lot of influence and you couldn't really reach 
places unless you had her permission. Okay. So all of this is good and very important, everything that Arid and I mentioned before. But something that really nicely sums up what Noor Jahan was as a person is this painting right here. So this painting kind of shows Noor Jahan during a tiger hunt. This is very famous. We have a YouTube short on it if you want to go check out the details of that hunt. She went on this hunt with Jahangir and a couple of other courtiers and she shot four tigers with six bullets in this hunt. So it's pretty cool. But anyways, so this painting right here kind of shows how she was as a person. Because now the painter, Abdul Hassan, actually had to decide how he wants to paint this Empress Noor Jahan. Historically, Mughal women were painted in three ways. Number one, either you are a vessel of royal birth and you have a very motherly vibe throughout the whole thing. Number two, you're either a seductress, you know, um, and number three, you're a very old, wise woman who we, people can go to for counsel. Okay, so the painter kind of... So the painter kind of decided that Noor Jahan doesn't really fit into any of these three stereotypes. She's maybe all of these and more. So he takes the decision to paint her during this tiger hunt image. She's holding a musket, she has a very confident stance. She's wearing the clothes of men. She's wearing, she's dressed up in hunting attire. She's also wearing a turban, which mostly only men wear. But at the same time, he also adds a very feminine touch to her by giving her this ruby necklace, which is something that Noor Jahan loved and she used to wear all the time. And he's kind of portraying her as this all-powerful ruler that she kind of was in a way. And one more thing to note is that Noor Jahan was basically, she was, she basically takes up the whole frame. She's alone in the painting. And historically, Mughal women were kind of painted in groups. They weren't really portrayed alone. Okay, so another thing to note is that in this painting, Abul Hassan kind of gives Noor Jahan a very realistic setting. She's standing in a very real scenario. And this is different because usually all the women were painted in a Nayika setting, which is basically a heroine kind of a setting where there's a fantasy land realistic. But he realizes that Noor Jahan has a very important role in society and she needs to be in society to be depicted as her true form. So this painting kind of, you know, sums up all of that and a famous historian Ruby Lal actually says that um, Noor Jahan is painted as a doer, a defender and a predator at the same time. So in conclusion to the entire thing, um, was Noor Jahan an emperor? Probably not because she did not have the title of an emperor. However, her power was akin to Jahangir's and we can see that in multiple forms and ways. You know, one can only speculate that if she wanted more power, what she could have done, but you know, that didn't happen. So that's all there is for this video. And we've listed our sources down below. As always, we kind of encourage you to go through those as well and not just take our word for everything. But we would love to hear your thoughts and how you let, what you liked, if you liked it. And if you did like it, then share and subscribe.